The UN does an about face after a report calling natural resource development in Canada racist. Justin Trudeau is the king of corporate welfare, but does it actually help? Iran continues to lie about the downed Ukrainian Airlines flight, plus a huge snowstorm buries Newfoundland, but the community comes together to help. I'm Candace Malcolm, and this is The Candace Malcolm Show. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into the program. Hopefully you are surviving the huge winter storms that have been happening all over the country, particularly folks out in Newfoundland. The footage from those storms is just absolutely incredible, and we're going to talk about it later in the show. But first, this is a story that we covered on the show last week, and it is just so absurd that it deserves to be covered again, this time from the opposite perspective. So this story came out was in the National Post. First Nations Chief Blast Condescending UN Anti-Racism Director that called for pipeline to be shut down. So if you recall, the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination called for three large-scale natural resource development projects in Canada to be halted. The rationale, they said, was that it was bad for Indigenous and Aboriginal Canadians. The only problem is that this UN committee didn't actually study the problem. They didn't even look into it. They said that investigative journalism is not part of their mandate, and they didn't bother to talk to Indigenous people in Canada. So a Canadian First Nation Nations chief is slamming that recent report basically because the UN didn't even look into the situation properly. So the project that they condemned, the, the, the UN called for the immediate shutdown of three projects, including the coastal gasoline natural gas pipeline. And what they didn't learn, what they didn't bother to study or find out was that that project actually has the sign on that 20 different indigenous communities have signed on to that agreement. So they're in support of it. Many other First Nations groups in Canada are supportive. So in a interview with Reuters uh, last week, the chair of this UN committee, Noradeen Amir, admitted that the committee did not study First Nations views towards the project, saying he did not know that most communities supported it. I did not know that most First Nations agreed on that, he told Reuters. This is something new that comes that came to my understanding. He further said that he did not seek out further information on the project because the role of the committee does not involve investigative work. That begs the question, what is the role of the committee then? What is the role of the committee? You've made up this United Nations Committee on Racism where you condemn different things in a you know in a in a peaceful free country like Canada for supposedly being racist without studying it without looking at it and then when you get kind of called out for taking the wrong position and not even representing the views of the people who you claim to represent you just shrug your shoulders and you say well that's not our role our role isn't to actually investigate what we're studying our role is to just put out these ridiculous reports this in a nutshell is a problem with the United Nations they are a organization that's mandate is basically just to demonize Western countries, demonize free countries like Canada, pit people against each other. And again, they shouldn't be butting their nose into our business. There's real racism in the world. There are real problems in the world. And they're not in Canada. And they're not driving from resource development projects. Okay, let's move on. I wrote a column on this topic in the Toronto Sun. So you can catch that over at the torontosun.com. You know, it's crazy. Justin Trudeau is the king of corporate welfare. He's handing out money left, right and center, of course, especially to, you know, big firms that are based in Montreal and based in Quebec, where he has a chummy relationship. Uh, but when you actually study the outcome of where this money goes and what happens to those companies, the picture isn't so rosy. So there's a couple of really major examples in the news recently of basically these companies pairing with the Canadian government, teaming with the Canadian government, getting corporate welfare, taking taxpayer dollars, and then the result is not exactly what you want if you are running a business. So let's first look at Bombardier. Bombardier is a Montreal-based aerospace manufacturing company. In 2017, the Trudeau government bailed out Bombardier with a $373 million federal loan. At the same time, the Liberal government in Quebec also provided a taxpayer-funded bailout to the tune of $1 billion. So 18 months after that bailout, the Bombardier announced that it was cutting 5,000 jobs. 3,000 of those happened to be in Canada. So why is the you know taxpayers in Quebec and federal taxpayers giving a company $1.34 billion to turn around and have them lay off 3,000 Canadian employees? Well, it went from bad to worse. So they Bombardier announced their earnings uh, for 2019. It turns out the revenues dropped. They failed to meet the targets and the stock price plummeted by one third of its value in a single day. So that is the largest drop. Bombardier's stock is now at an all-time low. So again, 
where's where's the return investment? Canadians invested into this company against their will. Uh, it was a bad investment, and now Bombardier is Bombardier is flailing. And you know the same thing can be said with Loblaws. Loblaws, you remember uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, Catherine McKenna, the then environment minister, did this stupid bailout announcement with Loblaws. You know, Loblaws is the biggest grocery store in Canada. It is a huge multi-billion dollar company. And yet they had to get a bailout from the Canadian government to build some kind of a new, you know, environmentally friendly refrigerator system. Makes absolutely no sense. For whatever reason, Canadian taxpayers shelled over $12 million to this company. Well, guess what? Guess what? Uh, The company just announced that it was laying off 700 workers and closing two distribution centers in Quebec and Ontario, noting that the positions were replaced by new technology and automation. So was the was the technology that the Canadian taxpayers gave to Loblaws, did that contribute to the layoffs? I don't know. But still, the idea that these big companies are taking money from the Canadian government and then turning around and laying off Canadians is just there's no excuse for it. It's it's the worst example of crony capitalism. You know, the Trudeau government is supposedly, uh, you know, they, they get accused of being sort of like neoliberal or free market. They're not free market. They have their hands in all these different pockets. They want to, to sort of take credit for companies that are successful and they do so by tacking on these little, you know, handouts to their friends. You know, it's not based on which companies are the best or which companies, you know, are, are the most deserving somehow of money from the taxpayers, but it's all based on lobbying and who whose lobbyists are friends with who and who has the most friends in the liberal government. Uh, well, you know, again, partnering with the government makes no sense and the payout isn't very good. And you could say the same thing about the media. Uh, we reported this last week as well. CBC's viewership is at an all-time low. They have less than 1% of Canadians are now watching their evening news program. Uh, their ad revenues fell by 37%. Uh, CBC National uh, News Network, which is their dedicated news channel, has just a 1.4% market share. The total CBC uh, platform across all television markets is 5%. So the CBC is getting more money than they ever have before, $1.2 billion in tax money. And they have no audience. Their audience is diminishing and falling apart, and yet we're paying more and more money to bail out this big giant. And of course, the CBC is again coming to the Trudeau government saying that they need even more money even more money. This is just, again, terrible example of the government interfering in the free market and not even doing it in a very good way, not even doing it in a way that somehow creates benefit. Like the companies that partner with the government are doomed to fail, which is why the government shouldn't be involved. If you're a business owner, you should run. You should you should not be like lining up or interested in any kind of government handout or bailout. You should be turning the opposite direction and saying, I don't want to partner with the government because of this track record. I know a lot of media companies out there are going to the federal government. They want to be par- have part of that 595 million dollar uh, slush fund for journalists. Well, True North would never take a penny from the Trudeau government or from any government because it is a lose-lose situation. Okay, let's move on. So Iran continues to lie about the downed uh, plane that went down in Tehran, uh, killing everyone on board, including some 57 or 58 Canadians. Uh, Most of the people on board of that plane, by the way, 138 according to the Globe and Mail, were on their way to Canada. So whether they were Canadian citizens, permanent residents, or they were visiting family members in Canada, many, many people on that plane had a nexus or connection to Canada. So Iran is basically just going back and forth. Uh, At first they said that they would release the black box from the flight and that's sort of what the international community was calling for. Well, the most recent news we hear is that they're no longer handing over that black box, that they are refusing to. If the plane was shot down, as the Iranian regime has now maintained, they've kind of this is the one thing they've kept straight for the past week. You remember at first that you know they lied and said that it was engine problems, then they lied again, saying that someone else must have shot down the plane. Then they finally came to their senses and admitted the truth that they shot down the plane, but they said it was an accident. Uh, well, if it really was an accident, why wouldn't you just turn over the black box? What what do you have to hide? Uh, the fact that they are trying to hide something uh, really really begs the question of you know. What, what really happened that night? And again, it shows just how just how evil this regime really is. Well, perhaps that's why a recent survey found that seven in ten Canadians believe that the truth about that night and that plane crash will never be found. Uh, that that they just don't have any faith in the Iranian regime or the international or the international community's ability to deal with that rogue regime. So seven out of ten Canadians. 
uh, felt that we would never get the full story, that we'd never really find out. Well, Iran is really pushing that because they are refusing to cooperate in any way. Okay, let's move on. Final story here. There was a huge, huge storm in Newfoundland, record snowfall. Basically, they had to call in the Canadian Armed Forces to help. If you look at some of the photos that have come up on social media, you see you open your front door and there's nothing but snow. It's a wall of snow. Uh, you know, you don't even know where to st I don't even know where to start uh, to dig myself out for something like that. Okay, so St. John's was in a state of emergency after Newfoundland was hit with a record-breaking snowfall that piled more than two feet of snow onto some part of the provinces and wind that was pushing that snow around and drift several feet high. So many communities are dealing with power outages and there are just tons of tons of reports, you know, like I said, people not being able to find their cars because they're completely buried by snow, not being able to get out of their homes. But I think my two favorite stories that I heard about over the weekend were both to do with women uh, giving birth or about to give birth. So this is something I heard about on the radio and I guess Mark Critch, who's a CBC comedian, he also heard about it. He said, radio just reported that a pregnant woman in labor drove herself to the hospital on a ski do. <laughs> I hope they are okay. I'm pretty sure the child will grow up to be the future premier that will lead us to prosperity. Wow, this is like the most Canadian story you can imagine. A woman goes into labor, needs to get to the hospital. There's two feet of snow outside, so she goes on a ski do like a champ. Uh, another story, um, similar, not, not quite similar, but another story about a baby being born in the midst of this crazy, crazy storm out in Newfoundland is the Snow family. Their actual last name is Snow. So Levi Jacob Snow was born during the height of the ra raging blizzard that knocked out power and hit eastern Newfoundland so hard that the military has been ca called in. It was 10.41 on Friday, about the same time that a record was broken at St. John's International Airport for the highest snowfall amounts in a single day. So the father asked for some help digging out their St. John's home on social media, and by Sunday, 10 to 15 Good Samaritans were outside his house with shovels. The couple faced an eight foot snow drift. There's eight feet of snow outside their door. Well, thank goodness for these good Samaritans that came and helped that baby get inside a warm house after leaving the hospital. That's the kind of stuff you love. Canadians coming together to help each other in the worst of the worst of the winter weather. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll be back again on Wednesday.